X account. Woohoo! Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Coach Les and Mr. Yarwood from Yarwood's Martial Arts. And we are here today with more of Matt Chat. And today we're going to be talking about some of the common questions that people often ask about martial arts training, along with some of the answers that will provide a little bit of clarity for beginners. So those are people that are curious about what it is to practice martial arts. What are some of the benefits? What are some of the reasons that I would want to kick my youth out of the house, get them away from their video games, get them away from the TV, and get them into a studio practicing martial arts? So I want to welcome Mr. Yarwood. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. And yes, sir. I'm going to fly the mic over to you to get started on this, and then I'll jump in. Sounds good. So uh, we there's a lot of questions that people have about martial arts because uh, it's not something that everybody has a lot of actual information about. Most of their information comes from TV or movies or whatever, and Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. While that's all cool, that isn't necessarily reality when, when it comes to actual martial arts training. So I like to kind of give a, an out an outlay of what it is that martial arts training is and what it is that we actually do. Um, Bruce Lee is everybody's probably everybody's favorite martial artist, right? Uh, he, 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 he put martial arts on the map, which is really cool. But what he does and what we do in reality, it's not the same thing. He was a great martial artist an actual martial artist, but his movie stuff was, was a little, uh, I say Hollywood, right? So, <laughs> Uh, first of all, a lot of things people ask is, what martial art should I do? Well, if I were to answer that question, which I'm going to, I say Taekwondo just because that's what I do. But there's so many other martial arts out there that I just encourage people to, to do martial arts in general, whether it be Taekwondo with me or you do karate or there's Kung Fu, there's Brazilian mar or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, there's traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu. I mean, there's so many different types. It really kind of depends on what you're looking for. All of them are going to offer something to you. Um, it's just you have to figure out what it is that you're looking for. So if you're looking for, say, physical fitness and um, flexibility and life skill training and all those things, Taekwondo is a great way to go. Um, we're known for kicking, which, you know, we do a lot of, which puts you in uh, the flexibility mode where you can do a lot of cool things. Being flexible is something that's important in your everyday life because when you're flexible, you move better. You can do a lot more things. Um, you're, you're able to just exist in life and not have a lot of pain and all that kind of stuff. But um, it's not like I said, it's not a requirement that Taekwondo is what you do. But do your research. Go out and find out what are you looking for? Are you looking for self-defense? Are you looking for fitness? Are you looking to you know, improve some coordination skills, whatever that is, um, find the one that you think is going to be best suited to what you're looking for and then start doing it. And then once you start doing it, give it some time because it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be an easy thing to just suddenly you walk in the dojo and suddenly you're a martial artist. You know, it doesn't necessarily work that way. So just be aware of what, what your, what your reasons for starting a martial art are, and then take that into account when you decide to join. Um, wh why did you join Taekwondo, sir? Well, so for me, um, originally when I was in my twenties, I joined karate. I joined the American Karate Association. Um, and, uh, you know, it was the one that was close. <laughs> it was, <laughs> That's a big one. I mean, yeah. it was, you know, it was between, I lived at the university of Minnesota um, I was a college student, uh, just wrapping up, and it was between my where I lived and class, so it just made sense. And yep. uh, I, you know, convenience be, was a big factor for sure. Um, and you know, Sensei Robert Fusaro 
was uh, our instructor. He was a, a ninth degree black belt in karate. And, uh, you know, for me, when I met him, the presence and personality of who he was also was another thing that drew me to him. And um, as I went through my first month, my quote unquote demonstration month, which I think made a big difference, I learned that it wasn't about money for him or his family. It was about health um, and being able to connect to your body um, and self-discipline. So all of the things that somebody would say, oh, well, it's a business. He's, you know, it's uh, the da, 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 about a business. It, nope, it was... The, the, the business was like, yes, it may have been in the top 10, um, but it was more about the person and the, and the, and the people. So when right. I stopped doing that years ago, um, when I met you, uh, Mr. Yarwood, in a business networking organization, um, I saw an opportunity for me for us to work together and, and a dream that I had to fulfill and and to fulfill on and for us to connect and make a difference and right. i think the the number one reason then was for health flexibility i mean i'm 60 years old now so uh even though you know my training has slowed down um with the acquisition of my newest business the the benefits that I have and some of the things that I do for stretching and uh, continuing to maintain myself at my, in my home gym have, have demonstrated to me and really that physicality, that mental discipline. And I see the difference it makes for kids mm -hmm. and owning an ice cream shop is all about joy and kids and adults that have the kid inside them. And I see a lot of synergy. So for me, there's, there's huge possibilities in how do we make and how do we pull kids out of video, out of telephone, out of anxiety, out of depression, out of, you know, if, if they're not like a, uh, what I would say, uh, skilled athlete right being in one of the sports where oh my gosh yeah he's a foot he's a football star or he's a baseball star or he's a pro golfer and he's only a kid and you know or tennis or volleyball or um you know all or lacrosse or soccer this gives somebody an opportunity to start wherever they're at whatever age they're at to start and to to move up into the ranks for self-development, regardless of age, regardless of skill level, regardless of, are you one of the cool kids, <laughs> you know, or are you suffering from, you know, depression or autism or ADHD or ADD or any of these things, martial arts to me has now, I see the access. And if, if it could be a gift that I could give to the world, I would say every every single kid ought to spend one to four years doing this, building that discipline and building that, uh, you know, having those tools available for them going through life. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a firm believer that everybody should do martial arts, but I'm kind of biased. <laughs> um, another thing people ask is, do they need to be in shape? to start training martial arts. I don't understand this question because that's like asking, do I need to be in shape to start working out? Well, no, that's the point, right? You don't have to be in shape. You'll get in shape from the training, right? What It doesn't make sense to go train somewhere else and get in shape and then come start doing martial arts. You know, we, we're going to get you in shape. All the stuff we do, the flexibility, the, um, 
the uh, the running, the sit-ups, the push-ups, the kicking, the punching, the blocking, the sparring, the everything that we do is going to get you in shape uh, if you put your effort into it, right? So asking the question, do I need to be in shape first, is is it it doesn't make sense to me. It's it's a silly question. So anybody of any age, any any weight, whatever body type doesn't matter you you come on the mats come train we're gonna we're gonna train you where you are and get you down the road we're not gonna expect that you are already in shape and that you already know how to do everything there's you know when you walk into a martial arts school for the first time you don't know anything right we're gonna get you there so being in shape doesn't matter as a matter of fact if you come in out of shape we're gonna help you we're gonna give you the tools that you need to get you in shape so it's it's not it's not even a to me it's not even a, a question i just move past it it's like no you don't need to be in shape next question <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean i you know it's it's like joining the military right i mean i have i have a uh, a personal experience i was told basic training was going to be super super hard and super super rigorous right on an average scale so i you know, being the overachiever that I am sometimes, filled a backpack with rocks, was running, climbing, doing push-ups every day, sit-ups every day. I got down to basic training and there wasn't enough time in the day for me to be able to keep the level of strength and uh, that I'd gotten to because they start out at the beginning. Yep. Right? So to me, it's in, it's in life. There's the beginning. <clears throat> and wherever you are, it doesn't matter. There's the beginning. Yep. Um, and, you know, I, yes, I had an opportunity in, you know, in your, um, in your Taekwondo to be able to move quicker due to the fact that I had risen to a certain point in karate. And so my initial skill level was a little more advanced. Um, and you accommodate for that which I think is wonderful. Um, I did a little research before we got online. I was just playing around and I did find out that, uh, you know, uh, according to Google, right? If you look and say, what are the top six martial arts? Um, Taekwondo is number one originating in Korea, both because it's a tournament martial art, but it's also an Olympic sport. Muay Thai second, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is third, boxing's fourth, Grab Maga, and then Judo. So, um, you know, I'm happy to say for me, I look at, uh, you know, I, I see the difference. And I think the, the thing that I see most for me is Taekwondo it works more on core and leg whereas karate works more on hitting and striking and arms. Um, yep. uh, you know, and still there was that core there, but it's the, the, the percentages are different. And I look at what's more important as a health for a 60 year old. Um, and I can see that core and lower being much more important than core and upper. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So I thought that was kind of fun to find that out. Yeah. And it's always, you know, it's always subject subjective. It depends on what your goals are with the martial arts. So, you know, it's, it's I, as a Taekwondo martial artist, I love Taekwondo, but I also on the side train in jujitsu. So it's a different, it's a different martial art altogether. So it, when you compare them, you know, it's like compa comparing apples to oranges. It really kind of depends. But uh, I'm, I, like I said, I'm biased towards Taekwondo. <laughs> oh, um, another one they ask is, um, is, is it safe? Is martial arts training safe? Well, yes. <laughs> what we do is we teach you the proper way to do all the techniques, the proper way to train. Uh, when we're sparring, we use protective equipment. Um, there's no guarantee that you're not going to get hurt. Right. That's that goes without saying with everything. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You can get hurt. But if you take 
the necessary precautions to train properly, learn how to do the things properly, uh, and don't do things that, you know, are going to be dumb and might hurt you, you're going to be fine, right? We all have we all have issues with our body, knees, elbows, shoulders, whatever it is that we're dealing with. I found that actually training in martial arts uh, helps those things become better, right? When you're when you're utilizing them and using them and stretching them and and making them active, I think you actually get better. Uh, your 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 health improves versus getting injured. So to me, you know, martial arts training is 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 probably as safe as you're going to get because it's it's assisting you in becoming stronger and better and healthier unless you do dumb things <laughs> yeah well i'm one of those right um you know last november i was playing belt tag and uh, twisted my knee which was already uh going through its growing pains and uh you know kind of put me on the sideline for a couple months and then, of course, discover that my knees are getting old. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Just like everything else, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, recovery is not as quick. And now I'm used to that, right? Well, so one of the things that I'm much more aware of is being responsible for, hey, I'm not, I'm not 20, I'm not 30, I'm not 40. Things don't bounce back in, in hours versus days. Now it's weeks since versus days and you know it's okay because i think that uh you know it, it continues to provide a challenge for me um you know how long does it take to become proficient uh, i think is one of the many questions that gets asked right uh i look at it takes as long as it takes and everybody has their own unique path and yep. one of the things that you can count on is that each place, wherever you go, you know, I see this in, in your business, Mr. Yarwood, is getting to know the instructors that get to know you and design a path that's individual to you. And that, I think, is also another benefit, right? Because who are the people that are practicing at home? Right. right. You you may only have two to three classes a week, but who's doing stuff at home? Who's taking yep. it to the next level? So yeah, so making progress is and becoming proficient is up to you. How much are you willing to do to get to where you want to go? Um, if you you know, we have an accelerated program for those people who are interested in doing more. For me, that's the normal, but most people aren't, you know, they don't may not have the time or whatever to do all the extra stuff, right? But I create a, a program for them if they're interested in doing it, but they have to be committed to it. I'm not just going to let them be in the program and then not get results because they are they didn't find the time to do it. So being in the accelerated program, you can get there a little bit faster as long as you're doing all the stuff, right? So instead of training you know, two to three times a week, you're training five to six times a week. Um, you're coming to the gym every single class. And when you're there, you're actually practicing and learning and, and becoming better and then taking it home and then watching the videos and training at home and doing all those things, right? Or on the other hand, maybe you uh, only come to class two to three times a week and don't do anything else. Well, the results are going to be are going to speak for themselves. They're going to show you, you know, that you're not ready to test for that next rank, that you're not ready to become a black belt yet. But it's because you haven't done the work that it takes to become one of those black belts. So it, it, it's a very individual thing. You decide how much work, how much effort you're going to put into it, how much training, how much practice. And then that will determine how proficient you become. And it's not about your talent level because everybody has different <clears throat> skill levels. It's about you becoming a better version of you and, and, and improving yourself and getting further down the road than you ever thought you could. But it all takes that. It's all up here. It's all that demonstration of deciding that that's what you're going to do. 
So it's you know it's it's up to you essentially. You make those you make the call. How much how much effort are you willing to put into it? Um, and then I hear people say I'm too old. Uh, how old did you say you were, Coach Les? Sixty one. Sixty. Are you too old? <laughs> no. No. I Not started. Too. I started when I was thirty six. Um, age has no bearing on starting training martial arts. It's an excuse. I'm too old. I'm too, whatever. I, I hear it all the time. I have plenty of adults in my class that started in their thirties. Coach Les came back in his fifties. We have Mr. Greg who's in his sixties, right? Started in his sixties. So I, I hear it as an excuse, not a reason. So age, age is not a barrier. It's just something that people use to not do something. I'm too old for that. Okay. That's, yeah. a, that's, that's a mindset. It really is. And I think um, a lot of people know who Tony Robbins is. Yeah. And uh, you know, he, he has a guy that's in his eighties started weightlifting had never lifted weights before in his life and at 83 years old won a whole bunch of world titles you know and and lifting weights and weightlifting at 80 years old he started yep so yeah there's when i hear people say oh you're too old or are you too old to do that are you kidding me <laughs> No chance. I agree. So they're never too old. And that also kind of goes along with um, physical abilities, right? Our our school, we have kids who are uh, have what's called uh, spina bifida, and they're in a wheelchair. We have kids who uh, had some uh, issues when they were young, had um, that caused some some uh, disability in their in their legs and arms, and they're some of the fiercest competitors out there. They're the ones that fight the hardest because they have they have a barrier built in that they have no control over, but they decide that it's not going to stop them. As a matter of fact, it's going to motivate them. So, you know, saying my knee hurts, my back hurts. It's you know that's fine. That's life, but it's not a barrier to stop you from training in martial arts or whatever it is you want to do. You just, just like with age, it becomes an excuse that you lean on to, to not do something because it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, but you know, if you're, if you're finding excuses all the time, then you're, it's, it doesn't matter what it is. You're not, you're not going to do it because you found a reason not to. <laughs> It just exactly. goes back to that mindset thing. You know, you determine how far you want to go. Nobody else does. I'll give you the tools to go as far as you want, but you have to make the decision to do it. Yeah. I, 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 life is full of opportunities. And yep. There's nobody that says you it has to be this fast or this slow. Exactly. And that, because I think that's the other thing. You're you're fighting yourself inside of martial arts. It's oh, not about sure. it's not about somebody else. Yep. It's not a it's not a team sport. It's no. an individual sport. You are your competition. You know, obviously we have competitions and tournaments and whatnot. But all that does is show off all the work you've been doing, right? It's up to you to do the work to get there in the first place. So you are you are your competitor. How far are you going to allow yourself to go? Or are you going to get in your own way? Yeah. Some people start martial arts training because they – want to learn how to protect themselves. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a great reason, right? 
but they they soon find out that when they get in there, it's not it, it doesn't it's not the primary <coughs> reason. They become professional or sorry proficient physically. They can handle themselves in in situations. We give them the tools to be able to do that. Um, but it's not like a guarantee of suddenly you become a superhero, right? It doesn't it doesn't inoculate you from violence or anything like that or anything that's going to happen. But it gives you the confidence to be able to handle yourself in situations or the intelligence to stay out of those situations in the first place. So you don't have to use your physical, right? But they quickly find out that there's a lot more that goes into uh, training in martial arts. Um, we keep going back to the mindset thing and the power that your mind has over you and the decisions that you make and the things that you do. So when you learn the mindset of, of a martial artist, you know, it, it's it's way more powerful than the physical stature that you might gain from becoming a black belt in Taekwondo or Jiu Jitsu. While those things are great and they're effective, you know, physically, if you're using your brain to start with and all the tools you learn from that, you're more than likely not going to find yourself in a situation that you need to use your martial art. That's our goal is to keep you out of fights, not put you in them. And, you know, and I think you, you, one of the things I know with this, some of the self-defense you teach is push and run. <laughs> yep. you know, get out of there. Yep. Right. And, yep. uh, and for little and for little kids to push, yell, say, you're not my mom, you're not my dad, and then to boogie to bring that situation alive so people are paying attention because crooks don't like that. Yep. Yep. Bullying. Yeah, and that's 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 the biggest thing is like I don't I have never taught fighting. We don't fight unless it's a fight to defend yourself. But we don't start them. You know, we don't go out looking for somebody to get in a fight with because we want to show off our martial arts capabilities. That's just dumb, right? We teach people to stay out of fights, only use it when absolutely necessary, and then only use it what you need, and then get out, right? Fighting is not fun. It's not glamorous. It hurts. You bleed, you get, you, you can break things, you can hurt. You can, I mean, there's all kinds of problems that come with fighting. And we, we try to avoid them at, at, as much as we can. That's not to say it's never going to happen where we actually get to use our physical stuff. But the goal is not the physical, you know, fighting with somebody else. It's to keep out of a fight. And when you learn the martial art, you create the confidence too to know that you can handle yourself if you need to. But you carry yourself in such a way that trouble doesn't come to you because people don't want to mess with you in the first place because you exude the confidence and the self-esteem to have people not bother you. They're almost like a, a, a respect of, of who you are because you respect yourself. Amen. I don't want to get in a fight. No, I don't think there's. No a, I don't think there's a winner. No. Nope. Yeah. So, there's never a winner in a fight. You know, uh, I think the if you can avoid it and learn how to communicate your way out of it, you are so much better off. Yep, way ahead of the game. Yeah. And that those skills, I think, help you in life outside of fighting. For sure. Negotiation, dealing with friends, family, significant other. Yep. So I think those are all good, all good things. Now, uh, curiosity, when you do become a black belt, do you have to register with the city? <laughs> These hands is lethal weapons. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. that's one of the biggest myths out there. Register your hands. <laughs> that's funny. I was just I was just curious because I I've heard that before, right? Yeah. No, I thought about creating like a a certificate as like a as like a joke, uh -huh. a reg registered hands award or something. 
So that's an that's an urban myth, then, right? It is, yes, sir. Ah, we love those. Yep. <laughs> that's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, there is no requirement to uh, to get on a database about martial arts black belts. Too funny. So, um, what do you think are some of the top reasons for how to choose a school? Uh, you kind of alluded to it in the beginning where you talked about your school was in close proximity to you, right? That's, well, that's, you know, a big part of it just because the school is close to you doesn't mean it's a good school for you, right? That's a convenience for you. But what you need to do is you, when you go take like an intro lesson or intro classes with um, um, a school, you, you want to look for people who are genuine about what they're doing. They're not trying to sell you on something. They're not trying to tell you, you know, we can get you a black belt in X amount of years, right no questions asked it's guaranteed um saying things like that or um signing up for these long-term <laughs> contracts that you can't get out of right and then um what's the school look like is it is it clean are the are the people there friendly do they seem to enjoy being there is the instructor somebody that uh you can talk to have a conversation with or is he standoffish and and think he's better than everybody else, right? You don't you don't want something like that. The environment's gonna be it's gonna be um, comfortable to be in, right? Um, location, you know, obviously you want a place that's close, but if all those other things don't ring true for you, it's not gonna be a good fit for you. You're not gonna be happy. So just make sure that you're you're in a place that you feel comfortable. Right. You, you're not going to know exactly if they're teaching exactly what you're supposed to be doing. But at some point, you'll start to figure things out. But it's more it's more about um, deciding if the first of all, if the martial art is the one that you want to train in. And second of all, is the guy or girl who's teaching it? Are they um, are they qualified to teach it or are they trying to teach you something that's, you know, that's some hogwash hooey crap that doesn't do anything for you? They just take your money and. Like I've seen some of the ones that they don't even touch you and you go flying across the room. You know, it's crap. It doesn't work, right? And becoming a martial artist doesn't guarantee you your safety. So don't listen to them saying, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you to be a black belt and you'll be, you know, you can fight Bruce Lee. It ain't going to happen, right? Reality has to sink in. So just take all those things into account. Are they willing to work with your uh, financial situation? Are they work, able to work with your 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 schedule does it fit your schedule all those factors come into play but ultimately if you don't feel comfortable there then you shouldn't be there don't let them sell you right with with their words make their actions and and what they teach prove it to you and then talk to the students who are already there talk to the families who are already there Asking them why they stay. What's the reason for them being there? And is is it a place that they like to be, or is it their place of just because they're, you know, it's convenient for them? Talk to the families and find out why they're there and why they stay. Because ultimately they made the decision to stay for a reason. So if you know, if if they're staying there and they can give you reasons why and you think that they're good reasons, then try it out. Yeah. <clears throat> That's my biggest thing. Like when I bring in new students, do intro lessons with them, I tell them, I say, those parents over there that are sitting in the chair with their with their kids on the mat, they're the ones you want to talk to. It's like I'm I want you here, obviously, but the people who are already here and who've already made the decision for their children and for their families. They're staying here for a reason, and they'll tell you. So they're the ones that are going to determine whether you should be here or not, not me. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, 
you know, I think this is this is one of the reasons for me why we're doing this show, right? Is to give notation to and give um, an opportunity for people to see what's possible. for people to see that it's not as fearful as some people make it. It may not be as easy as some people make it either. Nope. Um, and yeah, I mean, Bruce Lee's definitely the most famous, right? But you're not going to learn a one inch punch overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. You know, it takes time. Yeah. So, you know, martial arts isn't something. Yes, you may have a a proclivity to it because you're athletic, you're flexible, you're able to lift your leg up and hold it up. You may be in shape so you can punch enough, you can kick enough, you can, you know, and you have a good grasp on your body of how it moves and works. And Mm. When I think about that exercise piece, I look at, you know, what, what's possible if you take the stuff in class and come home and use it. You will get in great shape. Yep. Both mentally and physically. Correct. Any other thoughts to before we close up for today? No, I think we covered pretty much all the main ones that you know people ask about. There's other minor ones, but most of those get answered with the other stuff. So we're just trying to clarify about you know when to start, anytime, where to go, find a place that you like, which martial art, one that fits what you're looking for. So those are the main three. Yeah. I love it. Any question, any other questions for me as uh, one of your students, Mr. (laughs) No, I use, I use the, uh, the older adults as examples, right? Like when you hear the age thing or you hear, you know, I'm too old. Uh, no, you're not. Are you older than 60? <laughs> yes. Well, doesn't matter. Are you younger? Yes. Then come in. Age doesn't matter. Physical capabilities don't matter. None of that stuff matters. You just, it's all a decision that you make. You come in and, and just get after it. Yeah. And realize that this, it's a journey it's not uh, a snap your fingers. Yep. It's going to take time. Yeah. It's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Miss, thank you so much, Mr. Yarwood. And what are we, what, what are we going to be taking on next week? Well, I was thinking about um, kind of answering some questions that people might have or I had actually maybe even covering another one of our life skills yeah we got we got a ton of life skills that we haven't covered yet so I think getting back to picking one of those up and talking about some of the things that we teach beyond the martial arts would be pretty cool awesome I look forward to it and with that thank you everybody I know there's some people that have come in and um, thank you to uh, even C. Tan tonight from who's in Kenya, Kate Maxwell Williams, who's here in Minnesota, and Sean Hurdle, who's here in Minnesota, for coming in and watching and putting a heart and a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. And for those of you that watch this uh, post production, 
thank you. Thanks for taking the time to look and see how this might benefit you moving forward into the future. And feel free if you have any questions to reach out on Facebook, reach out on um, YouTube, reach out uh, on uh, X, i.e. Twitter, formerly known as Twitter. You know, we'd be more than happy to support you. Um, if you reach out to me, if uh, I can't answer it, I know that Mr. Yarwood will be able to. And as you can see, with both of us, we have our website information down at the bottom of our pictures. So feel free to come and check us out. With that, I want each of you to have a blessed week. Enjoy the upcoming weekend as we get ready to send our kids back to school here in the U.S. Thanks for watching. Have a happy Labor Day, and we'll see you next week. See ya.